day four of the dig. I think this is always the worst part of the day for me. It's turning up, it's a little bit chilly. It's never easy to dress for the weather at this time of year. Within five minutes of digging, you end up boiling hot and taking your shirt off and putting a vest on. So this morning, shorts and t-shirts straight away, but it feels chilly. Sticking on your horrible mucky boots from the day before. But we had a hugely productive day yesterday. A lot of soil removed. You can probably see the red line sprayed on the edge of the pond over there, which dictates the rest of the soil that we've got to remove. And it's still an awful lot of digging, but that horrible earthworks repair that we had to remove yesterday has been done. And I think that's broken the camel's back and we're sort of past the worst. The rest of the soil around the edge here, although it might be a little bit rooty, is a lot looser. It's a lovely, lovely loose topsoil here. So hopefully it won't be too difficult to get that out. Once we've done that, we will have established that level shelf all around the pond. And there'll be light at the end of the tunnel. We can start thinking about measuring up for the liner and it will feel like the bulk of the digging has been done. Look at that. That is the face of fatigue right there. <laughs> we have nearly done it. Last little chunk over here to get rid of. And that is the bulk of the excavation done. We still have a little bit of scraping around to do to address kind of the final imperfections and lumps and bumps. But really, I think pat on the back to both of us. Four days, a lot of digging, a huge amount of volume come out of this but has been well worth the efforts as this is going to get transferred across to the finished pond. A nice excavation, a nice neat hole is going to make it an awful lot easier to lay, to lay the pond liner. Dan's chuckling to himself at the prospect of a neat hole. The immature person. But honestly, having a neat excavation like this is so important for that final layer of the pond liner and then we can start building. It's nearly five o'clock, it's the end of a long day, but I want to get this finished off before tomorrow as the weather's going to turn and we've got a wet day. So another hour or two. I'm sure Dan will then, in celebration, crack open a real beer rather than these non-alcoholic ones we've been having. We can measure up, happy days. Come on, Daniel. Last couple of shovelfuls. I'll let you take all the spotlight here. Thank you very much. It's like you've let me do all the digging. Yeah. And it's Dave. <laughs> a little bit of a scrape. Can I have a shovel just to mow? The all important scrape. Hold on there. Good job, mate. Got there in the end. Yep. <laughs> it's not finished, but still, <laughs> it seems like a... Only another five weeks to go. It seems like a bit of a milestone moment, doesn't it? Oh, look at that. Thank you. So it has to be said that a lot of this couldn't be done without the hospitality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of the lovely staff here. Good. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, it's a real one. I added extra alcohol. You did. Yeah. Celebration. Yeah. Oh. 
Just had a big delivery of some building materials. We've got six tons here of some nice natural York walling stone. It's a bit dirty, a bit mucky. It's all going to have to be cleaned and jet washed off. And our first job this morning is going to be we have to shift this six tons of rock and we'll bear it around the back. And then after that comes the cleaning. Now this is a lovely, lovely building material. I like using York stone in many of my pond projects. It's workable, it splits nicely, it creates these nice uniform pieces of stone that are lovely to build with. And I think it's got a lovely, lovely sort of soft, warm, natural colour that works really well with vegetation, greens and, and sort of planting colours in the garden. So a lovely material to use. But an awful lot of stone to lay and to shift, so we better crack on. Yeah, good morning, glad you could join us. Good morning, Thank mate. you very much, cheers. Yeah. So what do you reckon? It's a lot of stone there. It is a lot of stone. Lovely material though. Could make got a different colour. <laughs> Daniel, initially, if you can hear me over the traffic, was quite keen on very kind of modern contemporary colours. So whites, greys, really, really sort of cold colours would have worked very nicely with that. And Purbeck would have been a good stone of choice. But Purbeck can really differ in colour. As a building material, it's not as nice as the York stone. It doesn't form quite such nice, smooth, uniform finishes, and I don't think it creates such a neat wall. So I think actually in terms of being contemporary and modern, having a nice, clean-looking wall that's been well-built, ultimately it's going to look nicer than necessarily the, the colour. And then we can edge the top of this pond with a grey slab or a light slab, something which is then going to make it look really formal. So once it's cleaned, you're going to get to see the real colour. There's a lot of stone to clean, um, but we've got to get it shifted out of this car park because we've got another delivery of sand and cement arriving shortly as well. But coffee time. And we've got to fix your wheelbarrow. One. Two. Well, as you can see, the second delivery's arrived. Good old Lindsay Clarks. Two thousand one hundred and twenty six, two thousand one hundred and twenty seven, two thousand one hundred and twenty eight. Now we've got four tons of sand to shift, but I think this can wait for another day. This is literally what I get from my labourer every day. <laughs> Look at him, he just can't get the staff these days. So we've had some good news. The pond liner and the underlay has arrived unexpectedly a day early. You're pleased about that, aren't you? The bad news is, it's bloody heavy. 204 kilos, doesn't sound that much, 102 kilos each, plus the bar, but it is. So I'm hoping the two of us are gonna be able to just shift this over to somewhere with a bit more space, and then we might be able to get it into a wheelbarrow and take it around the back. Obviously, we've got to be ultra careful with this. Any damage to this is gonna cause a major headache. So it's going to have to be done extremely carefully. So we're going to lay out a few little islands of fleece along our route so that we can put the liner down and have little rest stops on the way. That's the plan anyway. We can also have great big felt fights. <laughs> you have to tighten your belt so that you don't get a, a hernia. Bend at the knees. This is just a little practice lift. I've got the horrible square bit of bar. <laughs> what, what are you hanging on to? The handle. Okay, on three. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. That was easy second time round. We did practice off camera. I think we can definitely get it around here and get it onto a wheelbarrow. But we have to get it through there first. Okay? So we're going to lay out a line of felt. We'll carry it in stages, however many stages it takes, and shift it over there. Then we'll get it in a barrow. <clears throat> If we stop every one step. Yep. 
<laughs> this might take us some time. We're making progress, halfway. There. Good to me. Okay. This is where it's going to stay. The new pond goes here. <laughs> that is a heavy thing. But we did it. Well done. Don't mind. Well, it's an exciting day today. A lot of work to do, but obviously liners here, materials are here. We've got some final prep work to do to the shell, the excavation of the pond here, and then the plan is that we can felt and then line the pond and get some water in it. Fingers crossed. So the final kind of dressing that we have to do around here is to go around feeling for any sharp protrusions and rocks and roots and bits and pieces that might damage the liner. Um, Dan's already gone around this morning and done all of the sort of the flat surfaces at the top. I'm now going to go around all of the faces on the side here and just remove any obvious stones and sharp bits. I mean, it's amazing there's still little bits of glass, which we really don't want to have in an excavation for a pond. There's still a lot of loose material in here which needs to be taken out and then just some final attention to some of the lumps and bumps just to smooth it out. All of these really are just cosmetic issues rather than anything that's going to compromise or damage the pond liner. Um, a lot of the old felt we're hanging on to so that we can triple felt all of the side faces here when the most lumps and bumps and stones and bits and pieces are. Um, as always, belt and braces. I think when you go into this much expense and effort of doing it, you just as well do it properly and uh, it's all in the preparation. So Daniel is busy rinsing off all of the old filthy felt, which isn't very nice. He's doing a good job. He's muttering under his breath over there at me. Uh, I'm gonna crack on and just pick up all this loose material and then hopefully in an hour or two, we can start lining the pond. Oh, yesterday, we put in, when we were getting in and out of the pond doing all of the excavation and the digging, we had created a bit of a sort of a flat area here and that ended up becoming our kind of step to get in and out of the pond because it's quite a steep slope and, and quite a big drop into the pond. And when this is lined, I know in the future it's going to be quite tricky to get in and out. The line is going to get slippy and uh, getting out of the pond again is going to be quite a, quite a struggle. So we ended up digging out some of the loose material, putting in a little bit of a foundation and then just concreting over the top of this to create just a level surface to act as a step to make it a little bit easier to get in and out of the pond for any future maintenance. So that's worked very well. Exciting stage of this pond project. What are we doing now, Daniel? Uh, we're fleecing the pond bed. <laughs> and the purpose of the fleece is? To uh, protect uh, all the stones I picked out for the last 12 hours. Correct. So having spent an awfully long time in preparing this base, removing stones and roots and bits of glass and other sharp bits and pieces, we're now at the stage where we can fleece the pond. And this very important geotextile fabric is rock proof a very, very tightly woven fabric and designed to cushion and protect the pond liner and stop anything from coming through and, and damaging it. Now we're double lining the bulk of the excavation, but all of the inside edges here where there's quite a few stones and bits and pieces, we're gonna hang on to some of the original fleece and triple line just to make sure that the liner is as protected as it can be. That's the fleece gone in. We've got multiple layers of fleece. Some of the original fleece retained around the edges and then two and even three layers of this nice new fleece on top. I'm very grateful it's not a bright sunny day because even overcast like this, my eyes are swimming. It's very, very bright. So pond liner is in approximate position over here. 
ready for us just to carefully roll it down into the excavation and roll it down to one end. And once we've unrolled most of that liner, it should be an awful lot more manageable. We should be able to pick it up and just continue over that side. It's not an easy task with two of us doing this. It's very heavy and even just unfolding those sheets is going to be quite heavy and time consuming. So it's going to take a little while, but we'll get the pond liner pulled out, stretched relatively taut over the base of the pond, and then we can get some water in it to hold it down and start filling. We've had a second Bowser filled up in preparation of this fill, and that's taken two days to get this filled up. So I'm glad we've done that, otherwise it would have taken us absolutely ages to get the pond liner in. So we're going to probably end up draining both of these tanks. These both hold 4,000 gallons. It's a big volume, this pond. And I'm envisaging losing both of those in the pond, possibly needing a bit more of a fill. And then we can drain the pond back down into one of the empty bowsers to a level suitable to work in. Ooh. Okay, if you come down here, <laughs> I'm just going to get bowled over straight say, that to the was a, pond. That was a bit, that was a, watch the liner, it felt as he said, and then he did it all on his own. And okay, let's go down. Messed it all up. Okay, you really messed up my felt then. It's all right. We will we'll sort it out, it'll happen in lots of places. It's getting light already. Okay, here we go. Hooray! That's a bit chilly. <laughs> I was hoping that would go over the top of your way. No, it's serious mode. <laughs> <laughs> so we officially, nearly, have a pond. So nice to see some water going into this. Definitely a kind of a milestone moment in these sort of jobs, isn't it? It's going to take a little while to get it filled up. And as the water is starting to fill this and starts to pull on the pond liner, We've got to start to release some of the tension and the stress by lifting up these rocks. When we laid the, the pond liner, deliberately wanted to try and focus on getting the base of the pond as crease free as possible and pulling the liner up so that it was reasonably stretched. And you can see here it's not actually touching the edges of the pond. So as the water fills and pushes the liner up against it and allows it to fill the void fully, we've got to keep releasing a bit more liner and letting it come down. Very good. So. Once the pond starts to fill, when we get to a reasonable amount of water, we need to start neatly creating the folds that are gonna be sort of obvious in the pond. And the folds tend to obviously focus on corners and the steeper, sort of deeper curves of the pond. So this area over here is gonna have a few creases, and then this curve around here is gonna have a few sort of neatly pleated folds in position. The step is gonna sort of throw it all out of kilter a little bit, and there'll be a few creases down there. But once it's four feet underwater and you've got the full weight of this bearing down on the pond liner, it's not going to be visible. So that's going to end up being a nice, yeah. a nice fold right there. Good morning, back on site another day so we left it on friday with the pond liner neatly fitted in the center of the pond in the depths um, but we didn't get enough time or enough water to be able to get the outer shelving kind of filled up so we left the pond filling up over the weekend so we're going to drop the level of the pond down lower than the shelf so that we can just focus on neatly folding that last little bit of a line around the edge and then we can start to think about constructing the pond it's a bit chilly Water's definitely cold, and the pond looks enormous, seeing it filled up now like this with that increase in footprint. But once we get stonework in and the edging is 
So they're completed, it will then start to shrink back down to a slightly smaller pond size. What I'm really pleased to see is how much visible stone we're gonna to have towards this higher bank at the back of the pond round here. That's gonna be a really nice feature. But an awful lot to do. Very pleased we put this step in, otherwise getting in and out of that pond would be a slightly difficult affair. But progress. But Dan's got the unenviable task of washing this mountain of rock. And this is really important, there's so much clay and mud and sand and just kind of loose material that needs to be cleaned off this rock before it can be used safely with mortar. So each stone individually jet washed off. Had a bit of a mare with a jet wash this morning. So a very quick field repair, just so we can get it working. But that hose is gonna to have to be replaced. And silly things like that can end up really mucking up your day. Draining the pond down at the moment, just so it's lower than the shelf. So that we can finish up sort of neatening the, the pond line all around the edges. And that's going back into one of my holding tanks over there. So lots of little things happening all at once today. So as Dan's busy jet washing all the stonework, I'm taking the opportunity to pick up a few pieces that I think are gonna split so we can start to create some different gauges and thicknesses of stone to make a nice interesting feature wall out of. I think you really want sort of a good three different thicknesses. Some chunky feature stones, medium size and some really sort of thin bits and then lots and lots of nice thin packers or slivers to really make a nice good looking kind of dry stone wall. And when I'm picking up rocks, I mean York stone splits very easily anyway, but you can see how it's got layers of sedimentary rock, I think is the, is the right term. And it's these layers here which are gonna make it an awful lot easier to split. And not everyone will split successfully, but I'm gonna choose one of these lines that I'm gonna use as a guide. And then with a couple of good sharp stuns, there we go, splits off nice and easily to create a nice thin, uniform piece of stone. I reckon we could probably get another one out of this. Let's have a look. There we go. So that one big rock now becomes three Nice smaller pieces. Some of them end up needing a little bit of cleaning up. A few of the, the larger lumps and bumps that are taken off. And then later on we actually come to start laying stone. A lot of this is gonna get cut with a disc cutter to make it even more kind of uniform and easy to lay. Very nice. Getting bored yet? Yeah. <laughs> It's a glorious, sunny, but slightly chilly morning today. We're a few days on in the job. I've been a little bit lazy with the camera and haven't recorded much progress for the last couple of days, but we have actually started doing some of the rock work. So this is a couple of days of stone laying. You can see it's a very formal, neat formation of stone. It's gonna look very nice when it starts to come up along this back wall here where it's a lot taller, but it is a lot of rock and it's a lot of work. Yesterday was spent cropping and cleaning and prepping all the stone so we've got a lot of rock to uh, use today so hopefully we'll get a good day of laying Dan's on labouring duties how's labouring treating you? very well doing a good job mixing I'll be rating his mixes of slop as they've been coming out the first one was about 6.5 <laughs> <laughs> everything else from then has been very good <laughs> Very nice. So as always, typical four to one mix. Two parts sharp sand, two parts builder sand or soft sand, to one part cement. Bit of sharp, bit of builders. Everything of course is outside in the car park, so it's just bringing over what we need as and when we need it. A little bit of plasticizer to help aerate the mix. And again, another day spent laying stone.
come hither. So it's been a few more days of progress. I've been very lazy with the camera. I haven't recorded the start of the stonework, but we have started laying some rock within the pond. So that's a few days progress, looking nice and formal around the inside of the pond. It's a lot of stone to lay and it's gonna take a little while to get that done. But we're just at the stage now where we need to prep and crop a little bit more stone so we've got some more raw material to work with. Essentially, this is how the, the York stone is arriving. So this is York natural walling or random walling. And some of it can be used straight out of the package, just cleaned um, with very minimal sort of prep work. But a lot of this stuff is far, far too large uh, and not really gonna be useful for the kind of formal stone walling that we're doing inside the pond. So raw material like this offers lots of different opportunities and different faces. So with a disc cutter, we can trim and cut away various sections of the stone. We can split the stone to make it into a more usable formal piece of material. So it starts off like this, use of our diamond blade cutter. We're cutting the stonework. And then we're ending up with pieces of cropped walling like this. But even that still needs a bit of prep work. We need to try and chisel away some of these rough, uneven faces so that it will sit nice and uniformly and level on the wall. Uh, it's very important when you're cutting the stone that you either cut square with 90 degree angles or you cut inwards to create kind of a triangular face so that when you're butting the rock work up with each other, it creates minimal gap between the two stones. If you ended up with a cut facing the wrong way and then you try and line up a stone, you end up with a big V which is unsightly then you have to start filling with small bits and pieces. So I'll try and cut the stone triangular to make sure they butt up nice and neatly. Some of these bigger pieces I want to keep as nice large stones. I think that the walling needs to have a few feature rocks, different thicknesses, a little bit of character but some of the big stuff can also be split quite easily. York stone, oh hang on, let me grab this. In general, York stone splits quite simply, and especially when it's been cut, it makes it an awful lot easier to split. And just with a simple mallet and chisel, There we go. And that wasn't the cleanest example, but we can split, get a couple of different gauges and a few bits of stone that we can use for the wall. And when splitting edge, you'd always wear eye protection. Yeah? Always wear safety protection. I've got contact lenses in, so I'm fine. <laughs> So we're just at the stage now where we are including pipework and conduits and various bits and pieces at this section of wall. I need to make sure that the pumps, the inlet, is as far away as practical as the return from the filtration, which is at the other side of the pond, so that you've got good circulation in the pond. I need to make sure that the pumps are accessible for maintenance, um, that there's minimal pipework visible, but there's just enough so that we can lift the pumps out of the water to uncouple them for maintenance. So there's going to be a small amount of pipe that's visible from this internal rock colour down to the depth of the pond here. Obviously all the pipework here is going to be concealed under gravel and the pipework here is going to be hidden and built into the walling. So we'll get a couple of lengths of uh, inch and a half heavy duty hose in here and then I can continue to build up more walling. When we get round to the other side, somewhere over there, I need to start thinking about overflows and putting some through liner connectors. And likewise, at the very end of the pond, where the feature wall is going to be for the water blade and the returns from the filtration system, there's going to be a couple of four inch through liner tank connectors that will be um, fitted through the liner over there. But for the time being, a bit of hose here, and then I can continue to build the walling. So this is the daily routine. Dan having an nag at me about buckets. <laughs> It's a cold morning today, I don't know where that's come from, but we had a frost. 0 0.3 degrees on my thermometer when I woke up. And it is a bit of a shock to the system. These waders are cold. And it's difficult doing this when all the hotel guests are sat inside a lovely warm dining room eating what looks to be a lovely breakfast. 
You've not offered me a breakfast yet. No, I yeah. <laughs> So, really, for the next few days, it's just a routine of making some usable rock, knocking up some cement, and then spending the day laying as much stone as possible. A couple more days, and we'll be at the stage, hopefully, of just about focusing on the on the water blade feature wall and I think that's when the fun part's going to start. It's going to feel like we're making real progress then. Yesterday's progress with the pipe work in place. So, what's my target today? Uh, it'd be nice if I could try and get to where, where that spade is. I think that'd be a good day of rock laying. We'll see how it goes. Are you feeling chipper this morning? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> 